Njiru Mbuhe is a seeker of freedom and I'm someone who looks for opportunities to be courageous. So what I do now to be free and to be courageous and opportunities to be courageous is one, I am a founder of an organization called Mafrika Manzangu. So we do a lot of civic and, and political education online and offline. I am also a podcaster and a YouTuber. The podcast name is Mine is a Comment. The YouTube name is also Mine is a Comment. Yes. So the podcast talks about, we, um, we bring women and non-men together to talk about how, how women experience life and how we experience uh, you know, certain beliefs, practices, and decisions, and how those things uh, like sit in our lives and how they affect us. You publicly identify as a feminist, number one, like online, especially on Twitter. Uh, it's like you put a target on your own back because everything you say, someone will always be somewhere in your comments talking about how you're a toxic, bitter feminist, they will always come for you. Or if something happens to a man, for example, a man has been beaten and a man has been assaulted, someone will drag you into the situation asking, why are you silent about this thing? So, and most of the time, when, when, um, whenever a woman is occupying any, any sort of space and, and having an opinion, and an opinion that someone disagrees with, then sexists and patriarchs will always find a problem with that, with a woman occupying space and with a woman having an opinion. So a lot of the time, it's not, um, they don't even come for you for what you've actually said. A lot of the times, if you read into it, it's how dare you, who do you think you are? What makes you think that you are the kind of person who can have an opinion? Like, who do you, who do you think you are? Mona Jonanga Nani Sana, by the way. You think you can just come here and tell us things as if, as if, as if. So there's that, uh, like, they just, they get rubbed off because you're a woman occupying space and with an opinion. And an opinion that is, is a bold opinion. It's like women are not supposed to occupy space or to have opinions. We're supposed to all agree, hold hands, sing kumbaya, agree with one another, compliment each other. But sometimes you're, you're on the wrong and I will call you out for it. So when you feel like you've been called out for it and then you realize it's a woman calling you out and she's a feminist, it's like, Allah, who do you think you are? So that is where I, I feel like most of the trolling comes from, especially, uh, you know, on Twitter. My best approach, uh, number one, I believe in chaos. If you come for me with fire, best believe, if I have time, I will return the fire for you. If you come at me and insult me, most times I will clap back. And, and sometimes if I'm not able to clap back or if I'm not in a mental space, you know, because when you're clapping back, it means that you're now entertaining this, this thing. So sometimes you don't have the mental space for it and I will block. Other times I don't have to fight my own battles. I will, I will come back to the, you know, to, to the thing I said that I was being trolled about and I, and I find that people have fought on my behalf. So it helps to have a community. It helps to have an online community where if one of you is attacked, then someone else can come in and fight on your behalf or clap back on your behalf. And it's the same thing I do even for my for members of my community. If I see that someone is being attacked, most times I will also jump in and say something to make sure that the person who's attacking this other person knows that this person has people. So there are people you, do, you, you don't just come for, the, the members of my community online that you don't just come for. We will, we will pounce on you as a community. Or sometimes I will come for you, me, myself, and I will ask you questions that will just you know, embarrass you. Or sometimes I will just block. Yes, but then also, there are also instances where Someone has trolled you and you and you take note of the troll, but also the subject of the troll is, is an opportunity for you to do like an education kind of thing. So I might ignore that I've been trolled, but I will also look at it like an education moment. So you say, I, 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 I take note of the insult, but let me also say something about this thing that you have said. So now it becomes an education opportunity. Sometimes it's, it's not even running to, you know that saying where you will find your community, your community will find you. So you sort of find each other. Because I cannot tell you that you walked into something online. No, no, it's just the people you follow, the kind of tweets you engage with or the kind of content you engage with, the kind of, it will draw you to, you will, you will be drawn to each other. So that if maybe I, I put out something and I see that you have commented on, 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 on something I have put out, so at the back of my mind I know, oh, there's this account. Or if someone else, or you go and comment on someone else, or you interact with someone like online, then you will know that this person is like this and this person is like this. So you have to be very deliberate with what you interact with, the kind of content you interact with, because the community is in the content. So the kind of content you interact with then will say what community you are already a part of. 
Yeah, because even these trolls, they also troll in a community. When one of them comes for you, then you know that all the others are coming. So you just block, 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 block all of them because you know it's a, it's a, it's a whole community. So um, the, con the content you interact with is basically the community that you are knocking on. Yes, so it's just an interaction of the content, being deliberate about the content you're interacting with. I don't think that women are speaking too much. I don't think that we're even saying enough. I feel like women have really been silenced because we are in this patriarchal society and a patriarchal society means that a lot of the, a lot of the benefits fall on the men. A lot of the spaces are male dominated. In fact, let me surprise you, we have more men using the Twitters and the Facebooks and Instagram than women. There are actually more of them actually, most of the visible people are actually men. So women are actually saying less, women are actually being silenced and we have more to speak. And I think because the world has, is so used to, we have normalized the silence of women. So now women speaking has almost become like noise, but it's not really noise. We have so much to say, we have been silenced for so long. And I love that this generation, like our generation and the generation after us, uh, the generation Z refuses to be silenced. So what we are experiencing is not women talking too much, it's women not being used to speaking because we have been silent for a minute, silenced for a long time. So it's like, oh, you have something to say, but, but, but no, but we've not had this. We are uncomfortable with this because a lot of it is calling out men because men have moved in a certain way unchecked and unaccounted for. And women are coming up to say, no, this is unacceptable. So if someone is continuously telling you it's unacceptable, of course, you will look at it like noise, but it is noise that you need to hear so that you can do better and you can become a better person. That is, if you're interested in becoming a better person. If you're not interested in becoming a better person, then it will be noise for you, and I'm sorry, we will continue to make noise until we have a world where everyone is represented so that we don't need to make noise. So that we can just have, you know, conversations about flowers and peacocks and, you know, so that, you know, yeah. So that's, that's what I will say, that, that no, we are not making noise. In fact, it's not, if, if you would be listening to what we're saying, then it would not even be noise. You would not have asked me about noise, about making noise, or you would not even have asked me about silencing men because what men need to be doing is not being silenced, but they need to be listening, not being silenced. Yeah. Number one, I love, I love that there are mechanisms where you can report, like if someone is trolling you or if someone is, you, you can always block. I like that that is there. You can block, you can report, and you can. But then on a social level, I think that more men need to listen. Like men need to understand their privilege, their, their patriarchal privilege online, and just listen. Sometimes we have these things called uh, Twitter spaces where you will find women are just talking, we are venting, women are talking about motherhood, women are talking about various things, and a man will hope on and, and make it about themselves. And it's like, no, if you'd have walked into this space to listen, just listen. Listen fast, listen. <laughs> I think if you listen, then you become, so even when you contribute, you, you make more sense in your contribution. But sometimes you will walk into a space or even a conversation or a thread or something, and you want to argue for the sake of arguing. You want to argue because it's a woman speaking. And I see this a lot. A woman will say one thing and a man will say the same exact thing and the responses will be completely different. So if men can listen, and I, I, I don't know if that is something, I don't know because I've, I've I've seen it a lot. If you can listen for the sake of listening and understanding and not for the sake of, of, of arguing just because it's a woman saying it. We are right. We know what we're talking about. We've done, we don't speak out of, you know, out of just, you know, the blues. Argue, argue so that you can be understood and so that we can find a common ground. Not to argue because it's a woman saying and you're uncomfortable with women saying things or having an opinion or, or things like that. So yeah, listen. Listen to the women. Uh, the thing about children, and, and I'm, I'm usually very disturbed when I see children online or someone is, is filming a child and they're putting it online and I'm just like, has this child consented? Do, child, do, do children understand consent with regards to online content? So for me, I, I personally don't post children even on my timeline or anything, maybe one picture or two, but then I don't do it because I know that children is very tricky because one, they haven't consented, they, they, they might not understand the thing about consent, um, and number two, when someone violates your consent, I think um, it is our responsibility as a community to make sure that A, we highlight that someone's consent has been violated 
and to make sure that the person who has violated the consent understands what time it is. Either you report the account and have them blocked, or you have them pu pull down the posts, or you have them, um, or you have them apologize or compensate or something. But I think it is within. It, um, it's within the responsibility of the community to make sure that a we're not sharing vulnerable and we're not resharing vulnerable pictures and we're reporting and we're highlighting that this is wrong and it is wrong for this number of reasons because this was a vulnerable person in a very compromising situation and it is unacceptable so it falls on the on the on the community online and also for children the, the adults in the room will always be the bigger people always and without exception so don't go about posting your children's pictures and videos uh, because one is very, it's very unsafe, it's very risky. And some of those things, we, you might not deal with the harm of them. Like you might not have the power to deal with that harm because consent is a big thing. I'm very big on consent and I would just, if you cannot not post, especially if it's vulnerable moments, like where you're beating your child and your child, I don't understand why people do those things. Your child is crying and you're, you're filming them and talking about how to do they've done what. I don't understand why people do that. But just pictures where you're sharing your joy, also that is allowed. You're sharing your joy, you have just gotten a child. We want to see those pictures, we want to be happy. But if someone starts attacking you because you've shared the picture of your baby, then it's now on the entire online community to find out why is this person attacking this person for sharing a picture like that. So a lot of that responsibility is with the, with the, with the, with the adults online, yes. I think they should. I really think they should. Um, but I'd also like to say that the work we are doing now has been made possible by those women. You know, I'm talking about the Shefas, I'm talking about the Dr. Njo Keys, I'm talking about the Brenda Wamboys, uh, I'm talking about the Aishas, you know. Um, Bintiem, her name is Bintiem, and those women have done a lot of the leveling work. So for us to now come with a whole feminist community and have conversations every Thursday on Twitter and do the tweet chats and do the spaces, this has been made possible because of what these other women have done. It's like a generational thing, not really um, generational in terms of age, but generational in terms of experience and, and how long they've been online. So they have done the work of the leveling. So now we know how to fight because we watched them fight. And some of the battles they fought, we don't have to fight them online. Some of the things that will be thrown at us, they won't affect us as much as they affected them because we saw how they handled it and we're like, yeah, you can't, uh, like for example, you, you can't call me a toxic feminist and expect me to, to be mad. I have already owned the fact that you will still think I'm toxic anyway. Because if I'm calling you, then obviously I, I am, you know, I mean, I'm toxic. So for me, it's not an insult. And we've learned these things from, from the people who have experienced it before. So should they have uh, like a documentary or something? I think they should. I think they should. I think they should document their, their wins. I think they should document the challenges that they've had. I think they should also tell us uh, where we are missing, like where we are winning and where we are missing, where we are scoring points and where we're not scoring points. They should also let us know, because now they can see us from, from a point where we cannot see ourselves. They can also tell us what we need to do more and what we need to do less and how we need to interact more and how we need to interact, uh, sorry, interact uh, less. So to answer your question, yes, they, they, they should and they have. They should and they have, but it needs to be like, like a place where you can go to and see, oh, so this is how this was handled. Oh, so this is, ah, oh, okay, this is good to know. Yes. is always high and it's a patriarchal thing where you you expect someone to to take like you want women to do more labor because sometimes as a man you don't feel like you need to do that because it's a lot of work holding accountability is hard and so it's easier for you'd think that it's easier for women to do this accountability work but it's it shouldn't be that that women are supposed to do this and men are supposed to do this i feel like it's it's really unfair to expect more from women and expect less from men and that is a societal thing where the society will expect less from men and more from women. I don't know why that is. I don't understand why that is. I reject it every day. Sometimes uh, someone will come to my, to my timeline and tell me so-and-so has been killed. Why aren't you saying anything about it? And my response to them would be, you because you know they have been killed. What stops you from saying something about it? And the first question I will ask, this person who has been killed, what is their name? Many times they don't even know their name. They just tell me this person was killed. And the first question is, what is their name? So a man has been killed or a man has been beaten by women, which is wrong. Assault is assault, right? Gender-based violence is gender-based violence, right? 
But if a man has been beaten and then you come to me, me who did not, who was not even aware, I was busy doing my own things, maybe offline. Then I just see a notification and I'm being told someone has been killed by someone. And a man is coming to tell me that, why am I silent on this? My question is, you why are you, why are you asking me why I'm silent? This whole time you're asking me about why I'm silent, you could have used that opportunity or that time to highlight the fact that someone has been murdered and then you call me to help you to amplify it. So this thing of delegating labor to women, it's a societal thing. Men are used to doing it. Women are rejecting it. And I love that. And instead of calling me to do something, you do it and then call me for not amplifying it. But don't come. Like your first response is as if I am on your payroll. I'm not on your payroll. I am hurt by injustice the way you should be hurt by injustice. Why are you annoyed at my silence and you're not annoyed at the injustice that you're, that you're mad at me for being silent about, right? So me for me, it's, it, it's always you, why? Why are you not speaking out about it? And then tagging me to amplify it. That way it makes sense. It means that we are actually now working together. We are now understanding what collaboration looks like. But as long as you're seeing me as the person who is supposed to because I'm a woman and because I have spoken out against women being murdered, so now it's like revenge. So it tells me also that you don't care about the person who's been murdered. You just, you're just looking for an opportunity to say, aha, we've got her. But yo, that's, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we really doing here? Yeah. So do we care about injustice or do we just care about feminists and women being wrong or feminists and women being something that is, is not, yeah, yeah.